What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. Today, a little bit of a unique video. You guys have been asking about this for quite some time. I've done videos like this in the past, but van life here in the Volkswagen is an ever evolving process. So there's lots to catch up on, but I know that you guys are always wondering, always curious, more behind the scenes of what's inside the van. So today I'm going to go through and give you guys a thorough detailed behind the scenes look of my van and how I live in it and some of the theories that I use behind living the van life. So I figured we'd start off today's video by talking about perhaps one of the most curious subjects when it comes to living in a van. And I get asked this question on an almost daily basis. It's probably the question that I've been asked the most in all of these years of living in a van. And that is, where do you take a shower and how do you go to the bathroom? Let's get into this subject and I'll address it and give you guys my opinion on it. But first, before we do that, I wanna share just a few words from the sponsor of today's video, which is harrys.com. Harry's is a personal care brand that has reinvented the way you shave, helping you to shave in a premium and hassle-free way. And the ridiculously easy to get razor refills, they show up at your doorstep every couple weeks. To be honest with you, my favorite thing about shaving is getting a nice fresh razor and getting that nice smooth clean cut that doesn't irritate your skin. In fact, they've just released their sharpest ever blades, which are still the low price of $2 each. In fact, you can even get their trial set for $3 and give Harry's a try. They've also got some amazing gift sets available for the upcoming holidays, which make excellent stocking stuffers. Harry's also supports great causes by giving away 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to men in need. Honestly, the deal that Harry's have going on right now for their trial set is amazing. And by signing up, you're actually helping support the Living the Van Life YouTube channel. Redeem your trial set for just $3 by going to harrys.com forward slash LTVL. Let's jump back in and let's talk about where do you go to the bathroom? And where do you take a shower? It's not the end of the world to figure out how to go to the bathroom while you're living in a van. And really what van life is all about is about adapting and overcoming. Now, I always start off this subject of asking the person, well, what do you do when you're in town for the day shopping? Let's say you're out at the mall or you're grocery shopping. You go out to eat, you stop and use the restroom. What do you do when you're traveling? If you're traveling from one state to the other, or one city to the other, you stop at a gas station, you use the restroom. You stop at a rest area, you use the restroom. You adapt and you overcome. And that is probably the biggest thing that I try to explain to people. Now, of course, when you're you know camping in the van, you wake up at night, you gotta do your business. For me, that's usually a number one. And so for the guys out there, what you need to do is you need to go grab yourself a one gallon jug of water like this. Drink the water, finish it off, but save the bottle. I prefer to have one with a nice hefty handle on it. It's got a big opening here at the top, makes it easy to do your business. Store it in a cabinet and when you wake up at two or three in the morning and you've got to go pee and you're camping in the city somewhere, you can't just pop out into the woods and do your business this right here is where you're going to do your business. I know people get all weirded out by it, but you know what? That's just the facts of living in a van. Get over it. If you want to try this, that's you're just going to have to adapt and overcome. Even for females, if you go to any outdoor store or any sporting goods store that has camping supplies, typically they're going to have these items. Uh, one of them is called a fresh et, and basically it's an oval style funnel that is designed to fit the female body so that she can do her business similar to what like a guy would do. And then you could do the bottle trick as well. Now for number two, unless you're going to store a toilet in your van, you got to figure out an alternative. I opt not to store a toilet in my van because I live in a four foot by four foot space. I've had a lot of people recommend to me, hey, just get a bucket and fill it with sawdust. I guarantee you, I'm not just gonna be keeping a sawdust bucket here that I'm gonna go to the bathroom in. Not gonna happen, sorry guys. Great idea for whatever wild life you're living in, but not here. So for doing number two, the way I handle it, coffee shops. Go in and grab a coffee, jump in, use the restroom. Cafes, restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, any place that is open to the public, 99% of the time is going to have a restroom. Now, how do I go to the shower? 
Going and using the shower is actually pretty easy to overcome. I prefer to have a gym membership, something like Anytime Fitness or Planet Fitness. There's all these different fitnesses that are actually starting to set up chains where you can access these nationwide. You can go in, grab a shower. The thing I like about those is they are private showers, so it's easy to go in and do your thing without being in one of those weird group shower things. The other thing is, is truck stops. I have actually found that truck stops are very straightforward, very clean, very private. Like I said, clean, because I think when people hear truck stops, they think, oh, duh, gross, dirty, showers, nasty. But if you go to a big chain one like Pilot or Loves or Flying J, typically those bathrooms are actually really nice. They clean them after every single use and sanitize them. So it's actually a very comfortable spot to go and grab a shower. You adapt and you overcome because the benefits that this lifestyle actually provides you way outweigh what you might think is an inconvenience of trying to find a shower. It's something you just, you overcome the nervousness of it and you get beyond it. Now that we've got that subject out of the way, let's jump into a little bit of a van tour, show you guys how I've got this set up and talk about a few of the concepts that I use for living here in the van again. So first off, we're gonna start with the outside of the van. This right here is my 1991 Volkswagen Vanagon Westfalia. Now people are always asking, well, what, what kind of car is this? What kind of van is this? It is a Volkswagen, the model is a Vanagon, but Westfalia is actually a third party company that takes these Volkswagen Vanagons and turns them into the ultimate camper van by adding the pop top up top. In fact, there's a bed up top that folds out and there's room enough to sleep two people upstairs as well as two people down below. Also, Westfalia comes in and they add cabinets, drawers, also a stove and a sink, and also a refrigerator. So that is what turns these Vanagons into these ultimate little camper vans. For a number of years, Volkswagen did make a four-wheel drive version of the Vanagon. They're known as the Synchros. While they are capable, they're just so hard to find and very expensive. So what I've opted to do is take my two-wheel drive Volkswagen Vanagon and fit it out to be as capable off-road as possible. The great thing about these Volkswagens are they're compact. Because of the four wheel independent suspension, they're very smooth and capable off-road. The engine is in the back over the drive tires, so traction is phenomenal in these things. You throw yourself a good set of tires on there and you're good to go. Now, for those of you that have been following my channel for quite some time, you know firsthand that I love getting this thing out off-road and into the backcountry. It's a term that a lot of us refer to as overlanding, which is traveling overland by vehicle, and especially one that you can stay in long-term and that is outfitted. Now, one of those things that makes it possible for me to get out into the backcountry with a two-wheel drive Volkswagen hippie van is a good set of all-terrain tires. Now, over the years, I've gone back and forth between BFG all-terrains as well as general grabbers. Now, both tires are almost identical in tread design. I just prefer the look of the BFGs a little bit more than the General Grabbers. Both perform awesome, and that is really what makes this van so capable of getting out off-road. Now, I do have oversized tires on the van here. That is made possible by some custom suspension. I've got Go Westy lift springs, front and rear also up here in the front for the upper a-arms so that i can still keep my alignment adjustment i've got the burley motorsports upper a-arms but then for the ride all the way around i do have fox shocks installed on all four corners of the van here that turns this four wheel independent suspension van again into a quite capable off-road machine Now here at the front of the van attached to my steel bumper, I do have a high lift jack. Now these high lift jacks are great in emergencies. If you get yourself buried out in the backcountry off-road, these jacks can come in very, very handy. This thing is capable of lifting you out of mud holes, out of snow, off of situations where you might be high centered, or if you just got a flat tire. This thing will take care of all your jacking needs. I've got it mounted right here, like I said, to the front of my steel bumper. 
when it comes to traveling at night, off-road, in inclement conditions, this is one of my favorite additions to the van. This 758 watt, 80,000 lumen light bar is an absolute game changer when it comes to going off-road and feeling confident that if it gets dark, you'll be able to find your way. that on Amazon it's available for less than $150, you just can't go wrong. I've been using it for a year and a half now and it hasn't skipped a beat. One of the challenges when it comes to installing a light bar on a vehicle is figuring out how you're gonna mount it on there. Well, Dave over at Vanagon Life, who is actually a good friend of the channel, has developed these light bar brackets specifically for the Vanagon. The great thing is, is they sit right here in the gutter system. They extend out and bolt right onto the light bar. And for a Vanagon, it's an excellent way to get a light bar out over your windshield where it's working really, really good. So another great addition to the van, which I actually use quite often, as you guys seen in my videos, is my ARB awning. Now the great thing is that there are brackets available for the Vanagons and actually for a lot of other vehicles as well. But this awning is super simple, not technical at all, and it's actually very affordable. The ARB awning stores nicely on the van again here for going down the road, but when you pull into your favorite camp spot out on the beach, up in the mountains, it might be raining, it might be snowing, but this thing folds out in just a matter of a minute or two, and you've got some shelter. And the cool thing about it is, is it turns your small living space into a bigger living room. So when you're living full time in a small vehicle, like a compact Volkswagen Vanagon, it's absolutely key to come up with some sort of rooftop storage system. In my situation, I've got the Yakima bars up across. That also provides a spot for my 100 watt solar panel. But then on the back side, I've got the largest size Yakima box. And that is absolutely key because in that, I store my fire pit, I store my tire chains, my recovery rope, all of my cooking gear for the Dutch ovens. I also store my leveling blocks as well as my camp chair. It's actually pretty unreal how much storage that I have up there in that box. Now, of course, my top does pop and that does inhibit me being able to pop my top easily. Uh, typically, I don't pop the top unless I'm out in the back country at a camp spot, in which that case, then I unload most of the heavy contents out of the box so that I can go ahead and lift my top. Other than that, it's absolutely key because I wouldn't be able to take all that stuff on the road with me everywhere I go if I didn't have that rooftop storage. My whole entire goal is to keep my already tiny space free and clear of any clutter that I don't need while living there inside the van. So all that stuff goes up in my rooftop box. Here on my van again, I have installed my Yakima roof box on the driver's side of the van because I've got so much heavy stuff up in there. I've installed this ladder rack by Rocky Mountain Westy and it fits nicely right here on the van again. It stores away compact up against the van, but when I need to access the roof, I pop a couple pins. This ladder slides out, giving me the foot space that I need to get up there and get to my goods up in my roof rack. Because of the fact that I enjoy taking this two wheel drive van again out into the back country off road, I want to come as prepared as possible because I'm doing this stuff by myself. If anything were to ever happen and I found myself stuck, I want to have as many tools as possible to help get myself out of that situation. Right up here above the driver's cab of the van again, what they call the luggage bay, I have two Max Trax recovery boards. And those are up there just in case emergency, if I get stuck in the sand, the mud, the snow, whatever it is, the Max Trax can come in extremely handy. So you guys have seen me out in the back country with my mountain bike, trucking along through rough roads on the back of my van here. Now what makes that possible is having a good sturdy hitch. Uh, in the past, I've gone with the cheap knockoff bumpers that had a hitch insert in it. And to be honest with you, they fell apart. And just recently, I've upgraded to the Go Westy bumper that has the hitch built into it. 
all the framing is all built in behind the skin of the bumper which makes it nice and clean but when it comes to putting the mountain bike on and trucking miles out into the back country over rough roads that hitch is awesome and it's key for doing what i love to do out in the back country well, I would say that probably does it for the outside of the van and how I've built it out to serve my needs when it comes to getting a two wheel drive van again further out into the back country than what it was originally designed to do. So far, I am extremely happy with how this thing performs out in the back country off road because as you guys have seen in the videos, we get out and we push our limits, me and this here van again. However, when you live in a van full time, what really is important is how things go on on the inside. So at this point, let's jump on in and get to the nitty gritty of what it takes to live in a van. Well, welcome to my humble abode. This here is my living room. This is also my edit studio when I'm out on the road. This is also my bedroom, etc. But the great thing is, is that West Folly has come in and designed these already well-designed vanigans to turn it into a camper van. With all of these cabinets that you see here, it actually allows you to maximize that space, store the things that you need while you're living a mobile lifestyle, and yet still have a clean and livable spot. Yes, it's small, but you know what? The lessons that you learn from living in a space like this are truly life-changing because it teaches us humans that we really don't need all the stuff that we normally think we need in life. So the fact that I've been able to turn this space into a very comfortable spot, I'm very grateful for that opportunity to have learned that with my life. But this is it. This is the Westfalia. So to be able to give you guys a quick little tour of how things work here, it's probably important to start off right here with this couch, which actually folds out into being the bed. This is probably one of the things that makes this most livable. Now, right now in couch mode, it actually is a great comfortable spot to just shit. <laughs> this is a great comfortable spot just to sit and chill while you're in the van. The great thing is, as you can see here, while the slider door is open and you're parked out here, perhaps on a beach or on a mountain with a wonderful view, it's a great spot to chill and just enjoy the view outside your slider door. However, with a quick flip of a knob, that folds out into the bed. And then all of my bedding folds out here and voila, next thing you know, we're in bed mode. This bed is big enough to sleep two people comfortably. When the top is popped, there is another bed that will fold out, actually sleeps two people up top as well. So technically, you could sleep a total of four people in here, which makes it great for families and, and whatnot. So for my bedding here, I've got a base blanket that basically acts as a cover when everything's folded up there. Then I have a two inch memory foam mattress that I got from Costco, very affordable there. And then I've got a nice comfortable Ugg blanket as my base layer. This is a winter down comforter with a duvet cover over the top of it. This bedding system right here keeps me uber, uber comfortable for a great night's sleep. It also keeps me warm in the winter time. And in the summertime, it's even comfortable like this. So I don't have to swap out my bedding constantly between seasons. This is a good, four season bedding setup. It works awesome. In the morning when you're ready to get up, that whole bedding system folds up into the back. Then you just take the Vanagon couch, fold it back down and you're back into couch mode as quick and as simple as that. And all the bedding is stored nicely in the back. You still have a view out your back window for your rear view mirrors. Now what's also cool about this is that underneath the seat, there's actually storage opportunities. If we flip this up, Then we can see that there is more storage here underneath. Underneath here is where I store a couple pairs of jeans, a couple pairs of shorts in the summertime. Over here on the left, I also do store all my forestry tools like my survival knife, uh, my small hatchet, my fire starting equipment. And then down underneath there is also where I store my diesel heater and we'll get into more of that here later. All the way on the far side of that over there is where I store my dirty laundry so that as I use shirts, socks, underwear, then I store that stuff down under there. And once it fills up, then I go to the laundry mat and I do my laundry and then it all goes back into that cabinet up here in the back. 
Now I think one of my favorite things about having started van life in a Volkswagen Westfalia is the fact that Westfalia has taken these Volkswagen Vanigans and like I said they've turned them into camper vans and they've done so by adding in all of this cabinetry. Now this cabinetry has just blown me away by how over the years of all my thousands and thousands of miles of rough rugged dirt roads all this cabinetry is still thoroughly and strongly intact and it's very well laid out. In fact, I can't really imagine van life without having such storage. Now, if I were to ever move to a different van, then I'd be faced with having to build these cabinets in my own way. But the great thing is, is being able to step into a Westfalia, all of this stuff is already taken care of. Now, up here in this closet back here, normally this is like a clothes hanging closet right back in here. However, what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and built shelves in here. Up top here, I store my t-shirts. Down below is uh, my sweatpants and sweat shirt that I use when it's cold weather. I'll actually sleep in that. Down below, I've got socks and underwear. But then even further down underneath there, I still have storage space under there. In fact, that is where I have my Battleborn lithium ion batteries installed down underneath there and I'll get into the electrical system here shortly Down below the closed cabinets are even more cabinets down here is just kind of a kind of a catch-all cabinet for me I've got candles in there. I've got Bluetooth speakers some books just some miscellaneous stuff stored here in this cabinet over here in this cabinet I've got um, personal hygiene items um, I've got vitamins stuff like that I also store canned food down in here you know emergency cans of soup chili etc I also store my seasonings and stuff down here especially the Montreal steak seasoning that's important to have anyways all that goes here super convenient right here in this cabinet one of the things that I appreciate most out of a Westfalia is the fact that they have maximized the space extremely well. Right here inside the Vanigan, they have included a two burner stove as well as a kitchen sink, which for a small camper van is really, really awesome. However, in the 10 years that I've owned this van, I barely used the propane burners and I never actually used the sink. Because of my YouTube channel and being on the road with a lot of camera equipment, what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed that propane burner and the kitchen sink and I've actually maximized this space and modified it to store my camera equipment in a very accessible and usable way right here in this cabinet where the burner and the sink once stood. Back here towards the rear of the van, this is actually the spot where the factory AC unit used to sit and it was designed to cool the whole entire van again. Being that this was a 1991 model, it's been years since the AC unit worked. It never worked while I owned it. So in order to maximize that space, I actually took this apart, cleaned all the guts of the air conditioning unit out of there, and then built this custom face for that area and now I'm able to use it for storage so up here I've got like my wool base layers I've got extra jackets extra hoodies all of that stores nicely and it's easy accessible right here above the bed as I was mentioning before Westfalia installed the pop top on these vans which allows you to have a bed that flips out here which is great for families or when you're traveling with friends. However, I'm traveling 99% of the time completely by myself. So what I've opted to do is unbolt this top bed, pull that out and store it in a friend's garage. And what that allows me to do is have extra space for extra blankets, my down coat, uh, also bathroom towels, etc. This space goes all the way to the back of the van and it's actually pretty convenient for storing stuff that you don't necessarily need on a daily basis, but you want with you just in case. Again, another way of maximizing every cubic inch. One of the things that Westfalia did a great job with over the years of developing the camper van is that they actually integrated a refrigerator into the cabinetry. When you add that together with the stove and the sink, You've got everything you need to have a home on wheels or just a camper on wheels. But over the years, those stock refrigerators proved to maybe be not as efficient as what you might want. They didn't really keep things that cold and they had a hard time staying consistently running. 
So what I've done is I've actually removed the stock refrigerator out of its position in the cabinet and I use that cabinet for more space to store stuff. Again, maximizing every cubic inch so that I could still have a fridge system. What I've done is I've gone ahead and put in this Ingle Combi dual compartment fridge freezer. Now this thing is freaking awesome. It's a chest style fridge, which means the lid flips up here. In the back portion here, this can be used as a freezer. The forward position here is used as the refrigerator. In fact, I keep a whole bag of ice in here with me everywhere I go, which makes it nice for having ice with your whiskey, perhaps ice water when it's hot out. But then up here in the front, I've got a whole tray where I can keep all my food that I cook with nice and cold. This thing does run off of my 12 volt system. And so it's actually very, very efficient. It runs anywhere from 1.2 amps when it's idling up to about four amps when it's cycled in and doing its cool down. Even on the hot days when I was out in Moab and things were 97 degrees, this thing kept my ice perfectly frozen. And that right there impressed the heck out of me. So while we're on the subject of talking about the refrigerator here, I figured now would be a good time to talk about this fridge stand, again, by Dave over at Vanagon Life. And his concept behind this was, well, heck, the fridge is already using up this envelope of space behind the passenger seat. So why not raise it up a few inches and make use for storage underneath here? So the Vanagon Life fridge stand right here. And underneath here, I've got a pair of hiking boots, I've got a pair of mountain biking shoes, I've got another pair of tennis shoes, but then yet all the way behind those are my two tripods that I use when I'm out shooting YouTube videos. So Vanagon Life Dave, thanks much for helping me make even more use of this very small space. So here I am between the driver's seat and the passenger seat, and what I have installed here is a lockable center console that's built and designed by Dave over at Vanagon Life. Again, another way of maximizing the space here inside the Vanagon. Now this thing is all laser cut and built and engineered to fit beautifully here between the two seats of a Vanagon. It's got a huge storage compartment here where you can store all so sorts of stuff. Could be your valuables because right here it's got a combination lock to lock those things away, keep them nice and safe, out of sight, out of mind. It's got map holders, it's got cup holders, another little storage compartment here, and it's all built and engineered to be able to walk on top of this because one of the great things about the Westphalia is going from the driver's seat to the back cabin without having to get out of the van. And you still maintain that by having this here because it's built and designed to walk on. Again, Vanagon Life, Thank you much for helping me maximize this space to the max. So here in what would normally be considered the kitchen area of a Westphalia, here on the front of this cabinet, I've got a Venture Libre Westy Cocina installed. It's a cool leather product that is all designed to snap onto the front of this cabinet. But as you can see, it's got all sorts of storage to it from kitchen utensils to just little doodads that you use on a regular basis around the van bigger storage compartments here that I use for all sorts of stuff. So this thing has been an awesome uh, space saver here inside the van. But then if we open this up, this is actually where the uh, stock location is for the refrigerator in the Westphalia. Um, but what I've done, like I said, is I removed that refrigerator and then I've custom built shelving to go in here. Inside this space here is the auxiliary diesel tank that feeds my diesel heater and we'll talk about that here after a bit and that's how I stay warm here in the van. But uh, back here up at the top I've got a 10 inch skillet, I've got an 8 inch Dutch oven, I've got plates, cutting boards, a bowl. Down here I've got jet boil, jet boil fuel, another uh, solo stove cooking pot a coffee grinder, oatmeal, mugs, etc. here. Down here is paper towel, sanitizing wipes. If I've got whiskey on board, that's where I store my whiskey. But this right here has maximized storage space in a unique way here inside the van again. So in this cabinet here, moving forward towards the front of the van, is even more storage. 
Up here on the top shelf is usually jarred goods, food and whatnot. Down below is more dried goods and you know miscellaneous stuff that you just have stored here in the van. Uh, back in the back is my 1200 watt Victron inverter and that is responsible for powering all of my camera equipment, keeping my batteries charged, keeping my laptop charged as I edit here in the van when I'm out on the road. One of my favorite things to do here on living the van life is get my van out into the snow and go out and do some snow camping. In fact, last year I was out in Wyoming and it was as cold as negative eight degrees Fahrenheit, but because of my diesel heater that I have installed here inside my van, I was able to keep the van at a nice warm 65 degrees all the way through the night. So to me, having this diesel heater installed here in the van has been absolutely key for being able to make my van capable of living in all four seasons. Now I am now going on my third season of using this diesel heater and this diesel heater is actually available on Amazon for under $150. And because my van is a gasoline powered vehicle, I did have to install that auxiliary diesel tank in the cabinet like I showed just a moment ago. And that is what makes it possible to be able to have nice, clean, comfortable heat where all the exhaust and harmful fumes are actually exhausted outside the van and you're perfectly safe, warm and dry here in the van with heat that comes from that diesel heater. Now I wanted to save the best subject for last and that is talking about the off-grid battery system that I have installed here in the van. Now this system is absolutely responsible for everything that I do here in my van. It's responsible for keeping me warm when it's well below freezing outside. And when it's hot as heck outside, it's responsible for keeping my food cold. It runs my lighting when it's dark out but most importantly, when I'm hundreds of miles out into the backcountry, off grid, producing content for the Living the Van Life YouTube channel, this battery system maintains and charges my batteries and all of my camera equipment so that I can keep producing content and bringing it home for you guys. Here in the back cabinet, I've got two 100 amp hour lithium cold weather batteries, which Battleborn has actually just recently released. And when it's cold, these batteries are designed to heat themselves internally to keep them at the proper recharge temperature. Those batteries are managed by my Red Arc Electronics Manager 30, which manages my solar input. It allows me to charge when I'm plugged into shore power, and it also allows me to charge off of my alternator while I drive down the road. Coupled together with the Victron 1200 watt inverter, that keeps all of my camera equipment up and going so that I can continue to capture the content and bring it home for you guys here on the Living the Van Life YouTube channel. So I think that about wraps it up and gives you guys an inside look of where I'm at with the van right now. This is always an ever evolving process. New things are changed here in the van on a regular basis so it's good to be able to give you guys a tour and bring you up to date. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful, I'd like to go ahead and invite you to hit the subscribe button Join on board, that way you're notified anytime new videos like this are uploaded. And if you do hit that subscribe button, make sure and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that's gonna notify you anytime videos are released. Most importantly, leave your feedback in the comment section down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say about the videos. Don't forget to hit the like button, share it with any friends that you think might be interested in videos like this. All right guys, I'm out of here. I'm gonna hit the road and search for the next Living the Van Life adventure. Peace out, keep on trucking.